Dispatch, KARK 4 News, now at high definition. Sponsored by your Central Arkansas Ford dealers. Now, your forecast first from KARK 4, your weather authority. Another sultry mid-July day here in central Arkansas. And the forecast first overnight tonight indicates temperatures very slow to cool off any. 86 at midnight, 81 tomorrow morning to begin our day. I'll talk about the triple-digit heat and how long it could last and some possible relief ahead. Your news at 6 is next. Coming up. It's going to be hot. I get drink water all day long. A triple digit heat index cooks most of Arkansas. In depth, wild and mild ways to stay cool. Next, Arkansas got an extra $94 million. Medicaid to tax cuts. Lawmakers wrangle over how it could be spent. Plus, call it a community art project. A chalkboard sparks a wave of bucket lists. Now, from the station you count on. In-depth, investigative, part of your community. This is KARK 4 News at 6 in high definition. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jancy Sheets. Hello, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us for KRK 4 News and High Definition. I'm Bob Clausen. Well, if you step outside, and this sounds cliche, but it's true, it feels like you're walking into an oven. Thermometer hovering over 100 degrees outside KRK studio. Hot is what that's called. MEMS, Central Arkansas Ambulance Service, gets this. Say they have seen an increase from five calls in May where heat was a factor to an increase of 50 calls in June. And in the first 10 days of July so far, 29 calls because of the heat. Now, when it comes to triple digits out there, a lot of us can simply duck inside and cool down a little bit. But people work outside, they've got to work. And they also have to be extra careful, even if it means getting less work done. Construction workers telling us today they can never get enough water and they drink it constantly. They get hot naturally, but one guy says as long as he's sweating, he says he knows he's okay. We went by I-630, the I-40 interchange there where a lot of work is getting done. Wanted to see how the folks out there are handling the heat. Site managers say they have about 100 men out at any given time. Many work in air-conditioned cabs, so they're okay. But those in the heat and direct sunlight are told to take it easy and take frequent breaks. We also talked to some guys in construction. You know, that would be better even if the work gets a little unfinished or not finished when it's supposed to. Building because of the shade. They want to get in the shade and take breaks. Builders say it's still hot out there and there's no breeze, just stifling air. It's, it's going to be hot regardless of what you do. I usually try to pour a little bit of water on myself, try to get a bandana or something, just wrap it around my head. Even the boss knows you're going to slow down some, but it's hot. I mean, yeah. you know. It is hot. The transportation department workers are told to drink water every 15 minutes, even if they're not thirsty. They just got to keep rehydrating and rest in the shade. And they also do the buddy system. They watch out for one another and they wear light colored clothes. And we all know it is definitely hot out there, but are we officially in a heat wave? Well, the answer to that is uh, really no. We are a little above average. We have been for a while. Temperatures are in the lower 100s right now, but really only for a few days. The problem, our body simply can't cool ourselves off very well because of the, all the suspended moisture. And that means a heat advisory has been effect because when you factor in the moisture into the actual air temperature, 105 to 110, that's the heat index. So the heat advisory remains in effect until 8 o'clock tomorrow. Notice the temperatures right around 100 in Little Rock and Hot Springs, 102 in Clinton, 105 in Russellville, 106 degrees in Fort Smith, mid and upper 90s in the eastern part of the state. And again, it feels like 108 degrees to your skin here in the capital city, 109 in Russellville. Some relief is on the way, though. This will be a short-lived mini heat wave, if you want to call it that. 101 tomorrow, and then we're back into the upper 90s, possibly even some lower to middle 90s by Wednesday and Thursday with chances of rain coming back. So today, our only the third day so far this summer that we We've had 100 degrees or higher. Maybe we won't see too many more before that goes down. We hope not. We're looking forward to those mid 90s. Yes, they're on the way soon. Coming up, though, we are going to tell you some things that you may not have thought of to protect yourself from this horrendous heat outside. A few original ideas that yeah. we'll share with you. But first, the heat may be slowing you down, but air conditioners working on overdrive these days. KRK4's Melissa Seamus joining us now with tips on how to keep the cool air in and the hot air out. 
Well, Jancy, we paid a visit to Middleton Heat and Air today, and their technicians are working around the clock, seven days a week, responding to air conditioning problems, which can be costly when they hit. So, to avoid burning up or burning a hole in your wallet, experts advise a yearly maintenance checkup on your AC unit. You want them to check your refrigerant, clean your condensing unit, clean your filters, and clean your evaporation coil. Otherwise, they say you're going to be dealing with a big mess and no air. But they need to be serviced. They need to be maintained. And uh, when they're not maintained, these things work off of airflow. Lack of airflow will kill a unit. Now, there are other things you can do in your home to keep it cool without the help of an AC technician. You want to make sure that your ductwork and attic are well insulated because especially in the summertime, your attic can get up to 140 degrees. And you can bet that some of that hot air is going to seep into your home if that attic is not well insulated and that would not be pleasant. Jancy. All right, thanks a lot, Melissa. And if you don't have air conditioning and need a cool place to get out of the heat, the city of Little Rock opening up a series of alert and community centers. The centers will be open from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. and are spread all across the city. You can find a complete list by going to our website, ArkansasMatters.com. People who need help keeping the power on to keep their homes cool hung out in the heat today to see if they qualify for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. LIHEAP is accepting applications at a number of locations. People standing in line are there for any number of reasons, from being out of work due to illness or just trying to stop robbing Peter to pay Paul. I have a daughter. She's eight and she grows every day. <laughs> New clothes, food, gas. Some folks sacrifice that stuff just to keep the power on. Applications will be taken again tomorrow at the Arkansas State Fairgrounds from 9 to m until 2 p.m. This is for help with energy bills. You have to have been issued a shutoff notice to qualify. A number of other things have to fall into place for you to qualify as well. For more questions on LIHEAP, contact your local Central Arkansas Development Council office. You can go to ArkansasMatters.com. You'll find other locations throughout the state having mass intake days just like that. In other news tonight, what would you do with an extra $94 million? That's the question facing Arkansas lawmakers when it comes to the state's $94 million surplus. KRK4's Jessica Dean spoke with top lawmakers today, and she joins us now live in depth with the latest. Ultimately, ultimately, it's going to be state lawmakers who decide how to spend this money during the fiscal session that's coming up next winter. Now, right now, they all agree $94 million extra dollars is a great thing. What gets tricky is just how that money should be spent. How should Arkansas spend its extra $94 million? The state's Democratic governor and other lawmakers say it should go to Medicaid, which faces a budget shortfall of over $200 million in the next two years. You can plug holes, one-time holes in Medicaid easier with one-time money. We still have to do something for the long term as far as reforming the system. But even if we are able to make reforms, they're not going to be instantaneous. Others, like House Minority Leader Republican John Burris, would like to see tax cuts. I'm a big proponent of, of looking at maybe sending some of that back to the people of Arkansas in the form of tax cuts to help stimulate our economy. Everybody wants to give tax cuts, and we're among those people, but we only want to give ones that we know we can afford for the long term. And with surplus money, that's one-time money. You just don't know if it'll be there next year. And Burris sees it differently. Um, if the argument is that one-time money can't be used to fund an ongoing obligation, the biggest one to scratch off the list then is Medicaid. Two people who will be very much in the middle of this debate will be the legislature's Joint Budget Committee co-chairman, Democratic Representative Kathy Webb, and Republican Senator Gilbert Baker. When it comes to how to proceed, they are in bipartisan agreement cautiously. It's incumbent upon us to 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 walk very slowly uh, down any path of spending that money for sure. We've got to be very slow to spend. I think we should put it in the bank, let it get some more interest, and uh, take a look at what our financial position is in January when we start budget hearings. The fiscal session during which all of this will be discussed will start next February and you can expect to see a healthy debate over how to spend this $94 million. Back to you. And tonight, the Little Rock City Board of Directors determined whether you'll be able to cast your vote and propose tax increase. Here's how the one cent sales tax increase breaks down. Three eighths will fund capital improvement projects such as a new 911 communication system. That portion will sunset after 10 years. The majority, it's five eighths, will be funding the annual operations budget, including the employee salaries. This portion will be permanent. 
Currently, the city has a half cent sales tax. If passed, people would pay a total of one and a half cents. The money will bring an additional $48 million just in its first year. This afternoon, a driver dies after his car runs off the road. It happened at the entrance to the Rebsamen Park Golf Course on Rebsamen Road in Little Rock. That's just down from the Big Dam Bridge. Now, police say the driver ran off the road and hit a tree. There was a passenger inside of the car. She was taken to the hospital, but we don't know her condition at this time. A chalkboard, a chalk line, and a city street inspiring the imagination. It's all about sharing and caring, you know what I'm saying? For us, dreams of today, dreams of tomorrow. How it's sparking conversation along Main Street. I'm Terry O'Hara coming up in sports as we count down to the start of college football. More Razorbacks find their way onto the nation's watch list. Find out who's getting national exposure as the Hogs prep for September. Sports is later. And normally hot weather continuing again in the state today. Day number two where the temperature was above 100 degrees at 103. But at least some minor relief is showing up in your extended forecast when we return. This is KARK 4 News at 6 in high definition with Jancy Sheets, Bob Clawson, meteorologist Brett Cummins, and sports with sports director Carrie O'Hara.